The Mysterious Tadpole Written and illustrated by Stephen Kellogg Uncle McAllister lived in Scotland. Every year he sent Lewis a birthday gift for his nature collection. This is the best one yet, cried Lewis. The next day he took his entire collection to school for show and tell. Class, this is a tadpole, said Mrs. Shelbert. She asked Lewis to bring it back often so they could all watch it become a frog. Lewis named the tadpole Alphonse. Every day Alphonse ate several cheeseburgers. Lewis found out that he was eager to learn. When Alphonse became too big for his jar, Lewis moved him to the sink. After Alphonse outgrew the sink, Lewis's parents agreed to let him use the bathtub. One day, Mrs. Shelbert decided that Alphonse was not turning into an ordinary frog. She asked Lewis to stop bringing him to school. By the time summer vacation arrived, Alphonse was enormous. He's too big for the bathtub, said Lewis's mother. He's too big for the apartment, said Lewis's father. He needs a swimming pool, said Lewis. There is no place in our apartment for a swimming pool, said his parents. Lewis suggested that they buy the parking lot next door and build a swimming pool. It would cost more money than we have, said his parents. Your tadpole will have to be donated to the zoo. The thought of Alphonse in a cage made Lewis very sad. Then, in the middle of the night, Lewis remembered that the junior high had a swimming pool that nobody used during the summer. Lewis hid Alphonse under a rug and smuggled him into the school. After making sure that Alphonse felt at home, Lewis went back to bed. Every morning, Lewis spent several hours swimming with his friend. In the afternoon, he earned the money for Alphonse's cheeseburgers by delivering newspapers. Meanwhile, the training continued. Alphonse learned to retrieve things from the bottom of the pool. Summer vacation passed quickly. Lewis worried what would happen to Alphonse now that school had reopened. As soon as the first day ended, he ran to the junior high. The students were getting ready for after-school activities. Lewis arrived just as the first swimming race began. Alphonse was delighted to see all the swimmers. It's a submarine from another planet, bellowed the coach. Call the police, call the Navy. No, it's a tadpole, cried Lewis. He's my pet. The coach was upset and confused. You have until tomorrow, he cried, to get that creature out of the pool. Lewis didn't know what to do. On the way home, he met his friend, Mrs. Seavers, the librarian, and he told her his problem. Miss Seavers went back to the junior high with Lewis, but when she saw Alphonse, she was so shocked she dropped her purse and the books she was carrying into the swimming pool. Alphonse retrieved them. Then Miss Seavers telephoned Lewis's uncle McAllister in Scotland. He told her that he had caught the little tadpole in Loch Ness, a large lake near his cottage. Miss Seavers said, I'm convinced that your uncle has given you a very rare Loch Ness monster. I don't care, cried Lewis. He's my pet and I love him. He begged Miss Seavers to help him raise enough money to buy the parking lot near his apartment so he could build a swimming pool for Alphonse. Suddenly, Miss Seavers had an idea. In 1639, there was a battle in our city's harbor, she said. A pirate treasure ship was sunk and no one has ever been able to find it. But perhaps we can. The next morning, Miss Seavers and Lewis rented a boat. In the middle of the harbor, Lewis showed Alphonse a picture of a treasure chest. Alphonse disappeared under the water. Lewis and Miss Seavers bought the parking lot. They hired some helpers. And when the pool was completed, all the children in the city were invited to swim. That night, Lewis said, Alphonse, next week is my birthday, which means we've been friends for almost a year. Far away in Scotland, Uncle McAllister was also thinking about the approaching birthday. 
he was out hiking and discovered an unusual stone in a clump of grass and sticks. A perfect gift for my nephew, he cried. I'll deliver it in person. Uncle Miss Gallister arrived at Lewis's apartment and gave Lewis the present. Lewis couldn't wait to add it to his collection. Suddenly, a crack appeared in the stone. 